Hello and welcome to Quick Lesson 19. Today I'm going to explore seventh chords and I've asked the question to you, uh, what are they all about? Well, first of all, there are 12 um, seventh chords. We have to use seven of them. The ones that we would be familiar with would be A7, B7, C7, D7, E7, F7 and G7. The others I wouldn't overly concern yourself with. Right, they're a bit more jazzy. So why do we use seventh chords and what exactly does it mean? Well, seventh chords have nice sounding notes in them and they also have uh, one not so nice sounding, sounding note in it. And it's that not so nice uh, sounding note that makes it a seventh, uh, uh, seventh chord. And um, the nice sounding notes in, in the, in the uh, chord, of, uh, chord of C, for instance, would be Uh, C, E and G, right? There are actually two C's, C notes, right? But when we play uh, a seventh chord, C7 for instance, right? We have the nice sounding notes, but then we have a not so nice sounding note. Okay, the nice sounding notes are called consonant notes, and this one, not quite so nice sounding note is a dissonant note and it's that dissonant note that sets uh, sets up the sound within the seventh chord what it's actually saying to the to the listener is um i i'm okay with that chord but i quite like it to go back to being nice again so from from that to that all right so it's a way of um Capturing the capturing the listener and keeping their interest uh, within the song. It's, ne it's very rarely held for you know, for too long, but it does actually uh, uh, retain interest of the of the listener. Subconsciously, they're not really consciously thinking about it. Okay, let's just have an experiment. What I'd like to do is to play um, eight beats of of a C, eight beats of a C seven, eight beats of a C, right? Eight beats of a C seven, eight beats of a C. Right, and you'll see as we go uh, backwards and forwards between those how it wants to sort of resolve itself back to sounding nice again when, when it's on the seventh chord. Okay, on my count one, two, three, four. So hopefully you can hear as it goes from the C7 to the C how it's going, well, it's okay, C7 is all right, it's not that bad. But then it, it suddenly sounds sounds fine when it goes back to the C. Right, That's the principle behind, uh, behind C7 chords. Now, um, the, the C, um, C chord, I put a chart at the bottom of the, of, of the quick lesson uh, sheet, which actually starts to put numbers to the you know, to the chords. So, for instance, for a C chord, I've put C as one, D as two, uh, E as three, F as four, uh, G as five, um, A as six, and A sharp as seven. And I've highlighted that the one, three, and five are the C, E, and G that go to make up um, a C chord. But if now we have an instruction to say make it a seventh C, right? C seven, right? Then we need to add the seventh number there, which is the A sharp, which is what I've just indicated to you to you the um, the dissonant note is. So instead of having just C E's and G's, we now have an A sharp in there as well, right? And hence those numbers help us to understand which note is actually being added. As the seventh whenever we see an instruction G to play a G chord but make it a seventh right or a C chord but make it a seventh a C seven right we add the add the seventh note into our chord right? that's that's how we uh, how we interpret it so one two three four five six seven that numbering actually helps us to know 
what the seventh note is. All right, let's quickly explore the um, uh, the G seven. Right, G seven is 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 obviously a G, but we've added the seventh note in. So if you look at the chart, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're actually adding an F in. So if you make a, a G seven shape, what you've actually done is added an F. It's this finger here, right, has has made an F. Because right, the other two fingers are, are in the same place as are they, as, as, as they normally are for a G. It's only this one that, 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 that's become different. So uh, so now we're making uh, a, a G chord with G, B, and D, but we're adding an F into it, right? And that's that's that becomes the seventh, um, the G seven. Okay. So uh, what I'd like to do then is to is to explore. You know, this within within a song itself. So we'll use blowing in the wind, and we'll use the last two lines, which is uh, the answer. My friend is blowing in the wind. Uh, the answer is blowing in the wind. Okay, it's really the, um, the the two intro lines that we we would normally play, right? And then uh, listen out for for how it sort of goes from for an F to a G seven, but then it sort of wants to go somewhere else. It's nice. It's okay. Right, it's not a bad chord. The seventh chords are not bad chords, but it doesn't sound quite right, and it wants to resolve itself to uh, to another chord. And in this case, it goes to a C. So, so just listen, just just play along, and, and sort of hopefully listen how it's sort of resolving itself from from the seventh chord to a nice sounding chord. All right, one, two, three, four. So you can see my my friend go, go, goes to a G7. It's okay, it's fine, right? But then it actually resolves itself, itself to a C, which is a major chord, all right? So it now sounds happy and ni nice again. So by using that technique within within songs, writers are actually uh, hooking the listener. Now, typically when you're writing songs uh, for the first time or, or you're having a go at it, which I've actually do, right? Typically, we tend to favour major chords, you know, because they're safe and, and they're comfortable, which is fine. But you must have heard plenty of plenty of pop songs, quite frankly, which are really, really catchy until you've heard them like a hundred times. And then they're really annoying. That's because they have no substance uh, beyond beyond the major chords, chords to them. And chords which stand the test of time or songs rather that stand the test of time will have chords in them. Uh, which which spark the interest in in the listener to to actually stay, pay attention uh, to, to to the song. So that's what seventh chords are doing. Now, um, hopefully, that makes a little bit of sense for you because uh, from next week, what I want to do is to move a little bit further on seventh chords and explore how we can actually make other chords from the seventh chord shapes that we actually actually make. So um, have a go at that. See if you do hear the uh, the seventh, that dissonant sound, right, and uh, explore it within perhaps a number of other songs and hear it how it how it helps the song uh, maintain interest. So, thank you very much for tuning in. I will see you next week.